In our traditional approach to education, there is the teacher who knows and the student who does not and therefore must be taught. This fundamental relationship, which is the basis of educational systems throughout the world, severely restricts the very process of learning. This historical approach to teaching places the accumulation of information above all else. It fosters a deep psychological dependency on an authority to tell us what to do. It breeds fear by promoting comparison and competition. More importantly, it limits a child's natural curiosity by demanding a proficiency at memorization as a demonstration of one's worth. Krishnamurti has spent a lifetime questioning the basic relationship between teachers and students, exploring its effect on a child's capacity to learn. Through discussions, a quality of attention and a freshness of inquiry can replace conformity as the essential prerequisite for learning. In international schools founded by Krishnamurti, this emphasis on inquiry is incorporated into the educational atmosphere. At these schools, students, teachers, and parents come together and communicate by exploring and questioning. The urgency of this quality of attention and its profound impact on learning is a critical issue raised by Krishnamurti as he speaks at these educational centers throughout the world. Is it possible to educate not merely the academic side of a human being, but the totality of, of the human, the wholeness of man, the wholeness of man being not only the technological academic side, the functional side, but also the psychological nature of man. We seem to neglect entirely the inward, the psychological nature of man and its structure. So proper kind of education is the cultivation of the wholeness of man, including the psychological as well as physiological and so on, the entirety of man, neglecting neither the one nor the other, nor emphasizing the one or the other, so that a human being grows up harmoniously without any conflict, inward conflict or outward. And it seems to me necessary in a world that's going more and more crazy, more and more immoral, violent, so is it possible to create such a school, not by a few of us, but all of us together, those who are interested in school, may not have their children here, but to be concerned with the total development of man. Is it possible to teach any academic subject without any kind of persuasion, pressure, compulsion, in teaching any particular subject or self-revealing awareness requires attention. That's obvious. If I want to learn a subject, I must attend to it. 
whether it be technological subject or psychological investigation into, into the whole nature of man. That requires a great deal of attention. And most of us are not very attentive. Is there a way, without persuasion, without compulsion, without any pressure, to bring about this attention? So that when there is this attention, each one of us listens to the other completely. That is, a student may be looking at an ant crawling across the floor, or a beetle across the wall, and he is supposed to study a particular subject. The teacher is in concern with the subject. Generally, what happens is, the t- educator says, don't look out of the window, don't look at that ant or the beetle, pay attention to the book. That's a persuasion, that is a, a pressure. Whereas, if the teacher also looks at that ant or the beetle or out of the window and asks the student to pay complete attention to what he is looking at, you have already brought about that quality of attention without distraction or pressure. And any subject can it be related to the wholeness of man. History is not about kings and wars and conquering others and lands and so on. Not only that, but history is the story of mankind. The story of mankind is the story of you who are the mankind. In studying history, you are studying actually yourself, because you are the representative of all mankind, not Canadian, not an American or Russian or Englishman. You are, you are the world. So when you are teaching or informing another about history, you are actually studying yourself. And so you can relate history to the person who is studying it. And so there is a greater integration, greater perception into the whole structure and nature of oneself. So we are asking, is it possible to do the curriculum and also cultivate the psychological investigation of oneself, so that there is actual transformation of the human mind? So we have to start from the very beginning, (laughs) how to listen, the act of listening, the act of seeing, the act of learning. So we start. I say, I don't know how to listen, old boy or girl, let's both of us find out what it means. So I immediately have a relationship. I am no longer the teacher sitting on a platform. I am in relationship with the student because we are both are concerned what it means to listen. And 
And also, what does it mean to observe? Do we observe anything at all? Or is always an observation through a curtain of prejudice, a curtain of knowledge, a curtain of conclusion? Do I ever see things as they are? That is, do I? look at myself actually as I am, not in my physiological appearance, in a mirror, but inwardly, to see exactly as I am, without any distortion. So can I look at myself to observe the tree, the mountain, the waters, the rivers, the birds, the whole movement of nature and my, which, of which I am part, can I look at myself? And what does it mean to learn? Not learn about something, not about mathematics or Physics. What is learning? Learning, as most of us understand, is absorbing knowledge, technological and otherwise, storing up in, in the brain as memory, and acting according to that memory. Right? If there is the continuance of memory, knowledge, there is no discovery of anything new. Knowledge is always the past, so there is nothing new. So we are asking, what is learning? Is this eternal process of learning, acquiring knowledge, and using that knowledge skillfully or unskillfully? This is what we are doing all the time. So, if there is constant movement of the past. If this is learning, there is little hope for man, because he is always functioning within the field of the known, which is repetitive. So the question is, what is learning? Is that all? Can one learn about the new? The new being the absence of the known. Can you learn about that? We see, thought has become so tremendously important in life. We live by thought. All the things that we have created is the result of thought. Everything that man is capable of doing or has done is based on thought. Thought is the response of memory. Therefore, it is limited. Right? So, the thing that is limited thinks it can capture the universe. So can can thought, can one realize it is limited? 
It's a very small corner of a vast field. And that little corner says, I'm going to understand the whole field. And because it doesn't understand the whole field, it invents God, or Jesus, or Krishna, or whatever it is. An outside agency that's going to transform our whole existence. Right? So if I see that, then if when thought sees that, thought says, my corner is limited, I'll remain there. When thought realizes it's, it's limited because knowledge is always limited, it remains in its place. To see that, without prejudice, without conclusion, without <laughs> other, just to observe the fact that thought is broken up piece. And thought has created this tremendous mischief in this world, right? Religious mischief, political mischief, all the rest of it. So the, what thought has created is nothing sacred. So can, I, can one teach all this to a student? Can the parent and the teacher help the children, their children and the student to understand all this? Not just mathematics, geography, history, I mean, that's a terrible ball. And if I'm the teacher and if I'm the parent, it's my responsibility, it's my urgency. And surely it's the function of the educator, and I think the educator is the, is the greatest individual on earth, because he's bringing up children for the future. Therefore, they are much more important than the politicians, than the religious leaders and priests and the business people and all the rest of it. It's a sacred profession. So the world cannot be... Uh, there must be a transformation in the mind to bring about a different culture, different society, different world, and that's only possible if, if I can help this. You follow all the rest.